Okay, Vishal. So let's start your IC engine snap, and uh, you are preparing for IOCL. Okay. Yes, sir. As you mentioned, so my first question is to you: What is the difference between IC engine and EC engine, and what do you think which type of engine are more efficient, and why? Okay. So the basic difference lies in the process of combustion. In mm -hmm. internal combustion engine, the process of combustion takes place within a closed chamber, whereas in external combustion engine. the process of combustion take place outside the closed chamber so it it means it take place in an open atmosphere or an open environment i think the internal combustion engines are more efficient because there is much heat loss because when we fire something or burn the fuel out in the open there is more possibility of heat loss than in a closed chamber so the the less the heat loss is taking place the more is the efficiency i think ic engine has a more efficiency than over ec engines but like suppose if you will compare a petrol engine yeah petrol or diesel engine that is an internal combustion engine mm -hmm. uh with a thermal power plant power plant you know the yeah, kind yeah. of steam engine mm -hmm. so what do you think which one is having more efficiency sir coming to the point that uh, steam engines uh, where the power plant uh, installed engine in the power plant they have uh, they operate uh, in a very specific range of uh, but uh, where is in a engine like ci engine or si engine they have a very good part load capacity or part load efficiency where is in power plant we have uh, because we produce power in a huge amount in a huge uh, quantity so there uh, the very less uh, coal or the fuels like coal are much more beneficial than use petrol or uh, diesel because they are cost effective because mm -hmm. we are generating power on a large basis but on a small scale where we use the power in our automobiles or small vehicles it is good to go with the uh, petrol or diesel engine because they have very good part load efficiency so can, can, can you shall can you tell me something about the combustion in petrol engine and diesel engine how the combustion is different uh, in petrol and diesel okay so in petrol engine the combustion initiates with a spark so we need a spark plug there in si engines where is in compression ignition engine uh, because of the compression the temperature is reached a high temperature is reached and mm -hmm. auto uh, then the fuel ignites without any spark so this is the basic difference between ci and si engine in si engine we need a spark initiation method like spark plug or magneto mm. where is in ci engine we don't require this the fuel itself gets burned because of attaining the self ignition temperature what because do you think of which, the compression which type of fuel are having more uh, ignition temperature self ignition temperature petrol or diesel so uh, uh, petrol uh, are having the more self ignition temperature higher or lower higher sir higher petrol or higher i said what do you mean by abnormal combustion vishal sir abnormal combustion coming to the point of knocking it's the unwanted phenomena that takes place within a combustion chamber because of which the much noise and vibration are produced it is basically happen uh, when two wave front combustion wave front interferes with each other so this mm -hmm. create a pressure pulse within a combustion chamber which ultimately leads to the vibration or unwanted wear of the combustion chamber so how we can avoid this abnormal combustion in petrol and diesel engine just give me some example uh, which are actually we use uh, to control this abnormal combustion in petrol and diesel okay so there are many various methods first of all by using the fuel with which is having high octane rating uh, especially for the si engine where for the diesel engine fuels that have a high ctn number means they have high anti knock properties first of all second is by designing the combustion chamber properly there are many hot spots area if we design it very properly then we can avoid knocking the second one is the compression ratio we should be very much conscious about the compression ratio as the compression ratio is above the design one the temperature will be raised and ultimately it give rise to knocking and the uh, last one is the intake valve the intake air the intake charge so the temperature of the intake charge will be monitored properly otherwise it will the temperature will be raised and the knocking will start so first of all we should have to care about the fuels mm -hmm. fuel should have a good anti knock property we can blend of the fuel with other additives so that they can the anti knocking properties can be raised 
these are the basic step we can follow mm -hmm. so you mentioned about compression ratio yeah. so is it, is it the same case for both petrol or diesel like if the compression ratio is high the nuking tendency will be more is, is it same for both or it is different from uh, for petrol and diesel uh so actually the property of knocking is entirely different in both the engines the si and ci engines mm -hmm. um in uh, coming to the si engines uh, if the uh, ignition delay is high that is good mm -hmm. for us that that will uh, give good anti knocking property whereas in diesel engine if the ignition delay is more knocking will be more so mm -hmm. uh, coming uh, considering these uh, two points in mind the compression ratio for the si as we, as we all know that the compression ratio for the si engine is much less than diesel engine if you raise the compression ratio ultimately the temperature will be raised mm -hmm. and so this will um, uh, lowers the ignition uh, ignition delay and thus the knocking will commence so compression ratio is less in si engine than in diesel engine so what what i asked you ki the, if compression ratio is increasing the knocking tendency is going to increase in both the engines or it is only going to increase in petrol engine no sir in both the engines i think both the engines it is going to increase yeah, yeah. but you know if you are increasing the compression ratio the delay period is decreasing if you will talk about the diesel engine yes sir mm -hmm. and if yes or no delay period is decreasing or not yeah it's uh, because the temperature is raising so and the if, pre delay, if delay period is decreasing obviously the knocking tendency will decrease in diesel engine if you are yeah. using the higher compression ratio yes then how you can say that ki, that is the same case for both uh, petrol and diesel so i have to think over the diesel engine because i am not sure mm -hmm. about the ci si engine but i was mm -hmm. not sure about the ci si engines in ci si engine actually the knocking tendency decreases with using the higher compression ratio the compression okay. ratio in diesel engine is limited due to the design limitations because if you will go for a very high compression ratio you need to build that engine very strong actually. robust yeah, so yeah very robust very heavy yeah. engine you require if you are using mm. compression ratio in the range of 25 30 so that's yeah. why that is limited the compression ratio is not limited due to knocking yeah because there is no such uh, uh, increase in knocking if you are using the higher compression ratio in diesel engine but in petrol engine it results in the no king if you are using yeah. the higher compression ratio okay so uh okay you you heard about indicated power ushal what is indicated power sir indicated power is the uh, is the power that uh, is a theoretical power that we get, get out of the engine mm -hmm. uh, without considering any mechanical or frictional losses mm -hmm. so it is the theoretical power that we calculate that mm -hmm. we should uh, receive when we operate the engine but because of the friction losses so can you tell me some of the method by which actually we can measure the indicated power sir so by brake dynamometer dynamometer is not used to measure the indicated power Okay, then. as the name itself is describing brake dynamometer so it is used to measure the brake power brake horsepower okay you know what is the difference between brake power and indicated power yes sir what is the difference of indicated and brake power friction losses friction losses yes there is a friction so dynamometer is used to measure the brake power only the power which you are getting at the shaft okay i asked you how we measure the indicated power sir if uh... so if you know the mean effective pressure mm -hmm. yes sir actually uh, then um, by multiplying the volume swept mm -hmm. from where you will get the mean effective pressure sir actually i am not sure but uh, i can guess that there is a spring loaded valve mm -hmm. over the engine that can draw the pressure variations within the engine what is the name of that diagram yes you are thinking right vishal indicated diagram indicated diagram yeah that so is t s p v p t what so it's a, a pressure volume diagram pressure volume diagram indicated diagram yeah mm, so the, directly the closed area of that uh, pv diagram is going to give you the indicated power yeah the area of the indicated diagram is nothing but indicated power, indicated power. yeah yeah that's the volume swept pressure 
and if you will divide that area of the integrated diagram uh, with the swept volume then you will get the mean effective pressure yeah so it is that diagram only there is a one method okay is there any any other method uh, which is in your mind uh, which we can use to measure the indicated power of engine sir if you know the friction losses we can subtract it from the brake horse power. we can Fine. add it from to where the... from where you will get the friction losses uh Sir, you heard about Wink's uh, line, Williams line method? No, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, you heard about Morse test? Morse test, you know? Morse, Morse test. test. Yes. No, sir. Sure. I I have heard that, uh, but I do not know much about the test. Mm -hmm. I have heard the name. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, let me ask you one two more questions, uh, Vishal. You heard about ATFT technology? ATFT? Yes. So, would you please uh, elaborate what it's ATFT? Or it's a it's a technology by which actually we provide the uh, turbulent flow inside the combustion chamber so that there will be hmm. proper mixing of the burning. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, we provide some favorable shields moment within a combustion chamber. It's something like advanced tumble flow induction system. Yes, sir. I have heard that this uh, by designing the proper intake duct, we can introduce mm -hmm. the swirls that can increase the turbulence within a combustion chamber, which ultimately makes our charge more homogeneous, especially in uh, SI engines. Mm -hmm. Where in CI engines, there should be directional swirls, otherwise the combustion will uh, not take place properly. Swirl. You are saying swirl. What is the yes, difference? Sir. What is the difference between turbulence and swirl? So turbulence is a random moment. So it's a haphazard moment. But swirls means uh, they can have a direction. As in CI engines, uh, the swirls uh, is imparted to the combustion chamber by proper designing of the intake duct. So that when the uh, fuel injects, they have a one directional swirl so that the, uh, the remaining air, heated air, can uh, eject the fuel from the uh, jet and burns mm -hmm. properly. Okay, Vishal, my last question is to you. Uh, first, tell me about cutoff ratio. What do you mean by cutoff ratio? Okay. And second, just tell me the effect of this cutoff ratio on the net work output of an engine, particular diesel cycle course. What is the effect of increase in cutoff ratio on the net work output? Sir, cutoff ratio is a term we use generally in diesel engine. Mm -hmm. So when a constant pressure heat addition process is taking place, so the volume will not remain fixed. So as soon as the combustion initiates, the piston moves down. Suppose the combustion initiates at V2 and during the process of combustion, the piston got displaced by some volume. So it's the basic ratio of V3 upon V2, the volume up to which the piston displays during the combustion and to the initial volume of the combustion initiates. So cutoff ratio is a ratio of, uh, generally a ratio of volumes. V3 upon V2. So it's significance, coming to significance. When the cutoff ratio becomes one, it's basically uh, turns into a constant volume heat addition process. As uh, the higher the cutoff ratio, the lower is the thermal efficiency. Sir, uh, yeah, the higher the cutoff ratio, the lower the thermal efficiency. I, I, I just asked you about the work output, not efficiency. Sir, higher is the cutoff ratio, then lower is the work output. Why? Sir, because it will reduce the effective expansion stroke. Okay. Okay, Vishal, let me uh, give you the feedback. Uh, Vishal, expansion stroke is uh, uh, when you are adding it then also your piston is moving when your piston is moving from v2 to v3 that is also expansion what do you think constant pressure is not the expansion we yes, cannot sir. get work output in uh, constant pressure yes sir, it's basically it in... expansion only so when the piston is moving from v2 to what you can say v4 through by some constant pressure process then isentropic expansion that entire is the expansion stroke and that entire is the power stroke. So if yes. you want power, 
what is the net work output we are getting in the diesel cycle so there is a work which you are getting in both the processes you know net yes, work agar main net work output ki baat karu diesel mein so that net work output will be w from 2 to 3 plus w from 3 3 to 4, 4. minus w from 1 to 2 1 to 2 are you getting point yes sir so if you will take only that work in that expansion as a asymptotic expansion that will be wrong so increasing the cut off ratio is actually means you are increasing the more heat addition for a longer time you are adding heat yeah yeah so your heat input will increase q1 in, in, will increase and your net work output will also increase why because if q2 is in, that well, uh, cut off ratio is increasing so area under the closed area that entire area that will also increase increase you can you can okay. draw you can draw the diesel cycle and you can analyze if your cut off ratio is increasing that closed area will also increase yes sir and if that area of the diagram is increasing then you can say w output will increase so increase in cut off ratio results in higher work output higher uh, mean effective pressure yeah higher heat addition hmm. but it results in the lower efficiency why because your work output is in increased but at, at the same time your heat addition is also increasing yes sir so cut off ratio badhne se efficiency to ghatta hai बट वर्क आउटपुट क्या करेगा इट इज इंक्रीज इंक्रीज इज दैट क्लियर यस आपने इसको डायरेक्टली रिलेट कर दिया एफिशिएंसी से एफिशिएंसी घट रहा तो वर्क आउटपुट भी घट रहा होगा एफिशिएंसी इज द रेशियो ऑफ द आउटपुट बाय हीट इनपुट इनपुट हीट इनपुट तो इंडिकेटेड पावर इट इज अ पावर व्हिच यू आर गेटिंग एट द पिस्टन ग्राउंड एंड देयर आर सो मेनी मेथड्स बाय व्हिच वी मेजर द इंडिकेटेड पावर मोर स्ट्रेस्ड इज द वन ऑफ द मेथड मेथड व्हिच इज यूज्ड टू मेजर द इंडिकेटेड पावर ऑफ अ मल्टी सिलेंडर इंजन विलियम्स लाइन मेथड भी हम यूज करते हैं टू मेजर द फ्रिक्शनल पावर okay fuel consumption we take on the y axis then we will uh, draw the fdp on the x axis and then we will draw some line and we extend interpolate that line on the negative x axis where that line cuts we will get the frictional power loss and then we will add that frictional power with the brake power and we will get the indicated power so both basic uh, methods hain which we actually use to measure the indicated power three method yaad rakhna indicated diagram williams line method most test डायनोमीटर वी यूज टू मेजर द ब्रेक पावर अब वो हाइड्रोलिक हो रो ब्रेक हो स्प्रिंग रोड एडी करंट हो कैसा भी हो देर आर डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ डायनोमीटर तो डायनोमीटर लगा के हम ब्रेक पावर मेजर करते हैं द पावर विच यूर गेटिंग एट द शाफ्ट इंजन शाफ्ट अब नॉर्मल कंबेशन आपने बता दिया एंड वेरी वेरी गुड पॉइंट समथिंग सम पॉइंट सम ऑफ द वेरी गुड पॉइंट यू मैंशन बट एक मिस्टेक आपने कर दिया अबाउट दैट कंप्रेशन रेशियो compression okay. ratio is limited in diesel engine is not due to knocking it is limited due to the mechanical limitation mechanical yeah. limitation mm -hmm. okay the so knocking tendency in diesel engine decreases why because delay period is decreasing yeah physical delay aapka kya ho jayega it will decrease decrease theek okay. hai so knocking tendency ghat jayegi to wo bilkul clear rakhna hai petrol diesel atft to wo dekho yaar is tarah ki jo kuch technologies hain unke bare mein aapko pata hona chahiye theek hai kaise kahan use karte hain पेट्रोल डीजल का डिफरेंस यू आर आईसी इंजन एसी इंजन का भी डिफरेंस आपने बताया ठीक था इफ यू विल कंपेयर स्टीम इंजन विद डीजल इंजन देन यू डीजल इंजन विल बी मोर एफिशिएंट ओवर द स्टीम इंजन लो कैपेसिटी के अगर आप स्टीम इंजन लेते हैं बट इफ यू विल कंपेयर विद लार्ज कैपेसिटी इंजन लाइक लार्ज कैपेसिटी का अगर आप लेते हैं डीजल इंजन एंड सपोज सिमिलर कैपेसिटी ऑफ स्टीम इंजन इफ यू विल कंपेयर लाइक दैट थर्मल पावर पे तो वो ज्यादा एफिशिएंट हो जाएंगे चीजें इम्प्रूव है बहुत अच्छा मतलब आप अच्छे से डिफाइन करने का कोशिश करो दैट इज अ गुड थिंग बाकी ठीक है अभी प्रिपेयर करते रहो वॉच मैराथन क्लासेस लिसन टू सम ऑफ द स्नैप फ्रॉम्स रिलेटेड टू आईसी इंजन करते रहो मेहनत करते रहो एंड आई थिंक यू आर हैविंग सफिशिएंट टाइम फॉर आईएसएल यस अभी आपको कंटेंट और अपग्रेड करना चाहिए यू आर हैविंग टाइम आल्सो एंड यू नीड टू अपग्रेड दैट कंटेंट आल्सो है ना ओके सो फ्रॉम माय साइड द योर योर डिलीवरी इज फाइन ओके एंड इट इज गुड ओके बट यस ऑन सम ऑफ द एरिया यू नीड टू वर्क यस ओके विशाल गुड लक एंड कीप द गाइड थैंक यू सर